Hello everyone, I'm Torior and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 Openers. This time we're going to show a starting strategy for the United States of America. And the US is fairly unique because it starts very powerful, lots of factories, lots of everything, a huge fleet, lots of resources. But um, the United States starts with some very negative modifiers. The Great Depression, which reduces your political power very significantly and undisturbed isolation, which is the worst thing ever. So basically your strategy for the United States is to get out of these and then do some fighting. And pretty much whatever you choose, you'll be fine. You can take on um, the Axis, the Comintern, uh, or the Allies, and you should be successful. So this is going to be a fairly uh, short guide. I will focus not on long-term strategies, um, because they will depend on which side you choose, and there's a lot of choice. Uh, they will depend... Um, my... Uh, this video... <laughs> sorry. This video will focus on how to get out of these modifiers quickly, and how to get into the proper game uh, the fastest way possible. And you can't... You can switch out of uh, Undisturbed Isolation. But there is a catch. Well, normally you'd have to go uh, down this route here, uh, modify your, sorry, uh, which one is that? Here you get isolation, then you can switch to civilian economy, and civilian economy is pretty much, uh, um, you know, choose whatever you want from there on. But there is a way around that, mm. and the way is you can switch it if you are at war. But how to get an, into a war? when undisturbed, uh, undisturbed isolation increases the world tension uh, limit to justifying war goals. So basically the, um, the world tension needs to be at 100% for you to attack. Well, there are a few ways to declare war as the US. And these, this is what the war plans are for. If some of the um, requirements are fulfilled, like for example, um, you can provoke Japan with Pearl Harbor or basically, well, for each of uh, the major countries, for the major uh, alliances, there's one. So there's one for Germany, there's one for the Soviets, there's one for UK, and additionally there's also one for Japan. But these require pretty specific circumstances and also require, mm, require the world tension to be relatively high. For example here. Uh, well, basically, yeah, a lot of stuff needs to happen for these to be valid. Uh, also, you have bits here. When you reaffirm the Monroe Doctrine and do these four, then you can do Pax America and do a preemptive in intervention, and that is against Venezuela, or if you change your ideology, it can be against someone else. But it is not a major war, so you will not get rid of the Great Depression with this focus. It requires a major war. It requires you to fight one of the big ones or be a defender. But there is another way around that. Okay, let's get to it. No, no more talking. Let's do action. We're starting with reaffirming the Monroe Doctrine. This is going to consume all our political power, but it's fine. Now, research slots. Uh, this is pretty much standard, although as the US you do have quite a lot of research slots available, and you can get to six. Now, let's get to land doctrine. Um, I usually prefer mass assault, but um, a superior firepower is also good, but just make sure that you choose the right paths here. Um, so, just to... I mean, if you like mass assault more, go with mass assault. If you like tanks, I don't know why you would over-infantry, uh, which is so much uh, faster to conquer the world, usually. But maybe you like dealing with tanks, so that will be a good choice as well. Um, basically, choose whatever you like the most. I'm not a big fan of the Grand Battle Plan, though. This is my favorite. Still, let's go with Superior Firepower, just to mix things up a bit, because in the scope of this video it won't matter much. Okay. This is construction, and as you can see, we have tons and tons of factories. But most of them go to consumer goods, and also their output is severely limited. I'm going to start with tons of civilian factories. It makes sense, trust me. And produce some equipment. Yeah, let's, uh, I suppose, let's forget the fighters. Yeah, like this, and like this. Mm, this should do the trick, I think. 
Okay, um, as for forces, you could modify your troops to get, for example, get rid of the National Guard and Cavalry, uh, just to have everything be the same. Um, although, well, that depends on what you like the most. Uh, I usually tend to have just one type of unit. For example, I'd get rid of all the cavalry. And I would get rid of all the National Guard divisions, because National Guard divisions... Actually, you know what? I might want to get rid of normal infantry rather than National Guard divisions. Because National Guard seems to be better. See, here we have artillery, engineers, and nine units. In the National Guard unit, we have artillery, engineers, and 12 units. We would need to reduce this by one unit for uh, perfect um, efficiency. Yeah, okay. Let's get rid of regular infantry. It's a pity because we are... Um... Oh, they are fully equipped, eh? Ah, no matter. Okay, so we should be left with... Uh, what's this? Crimson Brigade. Yeah, I get rid of those as well. We have tons of time to, you know, retrain them. Okay, we're left with National Guard only. In order to not be... In order to not make mistakes, I'm going to delete all the other templates. Why am I doing this? Well... I do like to modify all my units simultaneously and have a consistent front line, but that, that is up to your preference. Okay, um, let's stop talking for a while and just engage at the game. Also, I'll make them repeat building those ships and get some convoys. As the US, you start with a massive fleet. And, well, you can use it for a bunch of things, and you also start having the Philippines as a subject, which is fine. Okay, um, let's maybe get some troops going. We do miss some uh, miss some equipment, um, but it is going to be delivered to the reinforcements. It doesn't really matter, because once we are out of undisturbed isolation, we will have a huge economy that will be able to make up for all the lost time. As your commander-in-chief, I would um, recommend Eisenhower. Uh, because he has two amazing traits, he's a field marshal, and starts with a skill of five. Okay, we have reaffirmed the Monroe Doctrine. Now we need to go with these four. Um, to be honest, to me, it doesn't really matter what they represent. But you do get the political power from them, and you also get access to preemptive intervention. So let's that get that going. Also, speaking of preemptive intervention, it will probably be Venezuela. Whoops. So let's get our friend Eisenhower to plan a naval invasion of Venezuela. We need a port. There's a port here. Um, yeah, do that as soon as you can. And also I need a fleet to patrol the region. That should do it. Just basic moves. Don't need an air force or anything. This is going to be quite easy. Okay, electronic mechanical engineering, let's go with mechanical computing. And soon we'll start making moves. We're going to hire... Now, um, we need to hire a guy that will change our ideology, either a communist revolutionary or a fascist demagogue. Um, it falls to you, both are valid choices, choose whichever you prefer. And we could, theoretically, we could have gone with uh, WPA first to get enough points to get the guy faster. But actually, I believe this is the better choice because it only delays it by 70 days and you get much closer to declaring your war. Basic machine tools, let's go with concentrated industry as always. Okay, Caribbean Sphere is done. Let's select another one of them and each of them gives you 150 political power. Now the first 150 we're going to spend on communist revolutionary or fascist demagogue. Really, whichever you prefer. We'll go fascist just because I usually do in these videos. Um, let's say whatever. Popular support, yeah. And now we're changing our ideology, slowly. We will need to flip, um, either to fascist or communist, for this whole plan to work. Oh, right. 
Now let's wait a little bit. Yeah, world tension slowly increasing. Yeah, um, playing the United States kind of requires patience because you can only enter the wars, you know, much later than the other countries because of the negative modifiers you start with. I suppose I could do these, although they're ahead of time. But they would give me mod nice modifiers. I suppose I'll do it. The faster we get uh, construction, the faster we'll construct the things. Which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Well, I suppose I could be doing more of the support and artillery bits. Right, and... You should make up your mind about who you're going to want to fight. Um, there are three general routes I would recommend, possibly four. Uh, you can fight the Allies, but this is problematic because it requires lots of naval invasions, although you are well suited to do that as the US. You have tons of ships. Um, oh, right, yes, we got 150 political power from the Focus. Uh, I recommend that you hire the Silent Workhorse. This means we'll actually start gaining political power, even though we are in the Great Depression. We'll be gaining it slowly, but it will be a significant gain nonetheless. So, basically, after we're done with the initial moves, you can do whatever you want, but you will need to fight a major power. So choose one. The Axis, the Allies, or Comintern. Um, for the purposes of this video, I will choose Comintern, just because it requires the, less, the least work on my part to set everything up. And as uh, this, you know, for the sake of brevity, just to make this short. But you, you might also, you know, want to invade all of South America um, in uh, the meantime. Anyway, you will need to fight a major. So at this point in the game, make up your mind whether you want to fight the Axis, Comintern, or the Allies. If you fight the Allies, you have a very good opportunity to take over Canada and then move into Europe. If you want to fight the Axis, it will be a little bit difficult to get to Germany and Italy unless you join uh, the Allies or Comintern, but you can get to Japan, although it will be difficult. Japan is very defensive defensible. Whatever. Um, although there is historical accuracy, so, you know, that has it going for it, um, for it, although it will be difficult for you to get to Europe unless you join the Allies, which you can do, of course. Okay, um, this is a very good event. We are going to choose the first thing, election fascists in the government, 10% increase. So we're getting closer to changing the government. Let's go with concentrated industry and the improved machine tools. We're investing our, in our economy. All right. When do you get new deal? Maybe you don't. Eh, never mind. Maybe we just could and didn't. Doesn't matter. Um, right, so. We do have enough political power to do something, uh, but we're not going to. We're going to save those points, although, should we really save all those points? I suppose I could do one more thing. I suppose I could do one more thing, like hire a war industrialist, for example. Or, no, no, let, let's, let's keep the points. I'll show you what I'll do with them in a moment. Okay, national focus completed, South America. And now we go with Pax America. We have 300 points, and we'll get even more because we're gaining them. Um, if you want to, you can spend a sum to get one more thing going, like uh, choose the infantry equipment designer or the industrial one. Although, um, you sometimes get the election event. I'm not sure what that depends on, but you can choose to get this for free in an event. I'm not sure what the details of this event are. I don't um, remember. Oh, we have completed the training of some units. Um, I am not going to deploy them yet, because we will want to modify the template. National Guard has a little bit too many troops. The combat width of 22 is perfect, so we basically need to remove one infantry unit. That will cost five army experience, and we don't have that. If you want to do that earlier, you might want to hire a theorist, but they're very, very expensive. Although, 
Mm, I suppose we could hire the superior firepower expert, which would increase our speed of gaining those points, I suppose. Mm, let's see, we're getting 0 0.3 per day. Uh, that times 70, that's uh, oh, 21 points. No, we can't afford him right now. He'll have to wait. Oh, right, research. Um, I suppose it doesn't really matter what you choose at this point. You could go with this, but you'll get a nice bonus to it later. Mm, excavation. We do have tons of resources, which are being traded away mostly. I suppose you could improve your artillery, because we do have artillery attachments. Okay, now mm, the preemptive uh, intervention focus. It is very important to get this quickly. That'll let us attack Venezuela. Also, um, the fascists and the government are taking their sweet time, but it's fine. They'll get there in the end. We could have sped this up if we started with WPA, but then that would delay the war. Improved machine tools. Okay, cool. Um, I suppose I'll go with... Uh, maybe we could do motorized and add hospitals and logistics. So let's do that. Oh, also we need to do the infantry equipment modification. Okay, how far are we from finishing this focus? We are almost there. Puppet, focus war goal. See, this is not a claim, this is a war goal. This is why it's very good, because even if you're a democracy, you can act on those. All right, mm, first things first, research. Let's go with this. And war goal. Declare war, but don't win it. We have declared war on Venezuela. We'll land here, we'll be gaining army experience by defending against their attacks, but don't push, don't win the war, you need to be at war. Why? Well, because now we could do all sorts of things, which will become clear in a moment, because we are technically at war, even though it's a small war in South America. We can now kind of cheat our way out of undisturbed isolation. Now, we can't go to war economy because uh, the world tension is too low, but we can go to partial mobilization. Boom! We're no longer in, mm, in undisturbed isolation. We can now change manpower laws, although we don't really need to at the moment. And we're free, kind of. We still, uh, we're free from our isolation politics that limited us. And if we had changed the government uh, by this time, we could already start justifying war goals on whoever we wanted. Uh, but we haven't, so we can't. So, for example, we could conquer Mexico. Mm, well, we can't because we are still democratic, but we are working on it. Now, mm, the speed of changing your government will depend on... Um, on luck and events, and whether you choose fascist or communist, but... See, undisturbed isolation was horrible. It required us to spend tons and tons of factories on consumer goods, and also limited our factory output. Now we're out of that. We still have Great Depression, but we're not in such a bad situation. Our industry is going up. Okay, uh, let's watch Eisenhower conquer Venezuela. Or rather, land in Venezuela. Amelia Earhart wants to enlist. I am going to say yes, just for role-playing uh, just for role playing reasons, because from uh, the man-maxing perspective, this is not a good deal. Political power is worth more than an ace. Okay, so, uh, if public support is sufficient, coup can be executed, which means I think the public support uh, cutoff point is 30%, so we could become fascist at any moment if we uh, get a lucky break and proper events. As you can see, we're invading. It is problematic, but we'll land on one of those and then close the loop. Okay. Fascist divisions form. This is this is good for us. It increases the recruitable population. Okay, we need to get here because there's a port. We need that for supplies. I could actually now I could actually assign more units here, but we don't need that. We don't need that. We want. Um, we just want to stand here and accumulate army experience. We don't need any excess attrition or anything. So just put yourselves here and defend yourselves. Okay. Mm. Now, I would recommend going this way, because I like attachments. 
but if you want to use the line artillery then this is a good choice okay so basically we are out of all the bad oh i forgot to choose a new focus sorry about that um yeah forget all this all this crap go here wpa extra political power and we do have enough power to modify the government now we could do this and mm, remove this armed nation but we won't need to because soon the world tension will go up we can do war propaganda which will change it to volunteer only and from there you can you know go wherever you want but you don't really need a lot of manpower at this point mm, right so now we just wait for the change in government remember do not conquer venezuela yet because some of these focuses here require you to be at war as well for example this needs 80 percent world tension or for you to be at war 30 percent world tension or be at war so you can use your tiny war with venezuela to get uh, to get over that focus um, restrictions that focuses restrictions okay um should we improve our infantry i suppose we could i suppose we could doesn't really matter that much um, which order exactly we choose uh, this is nice but we can get a bonus to it no not um, I guess I'll go with infantry equipment okay we have the points to modify the government so I suppose I could hire some um, some experts like army logistics expert okay uh, the extra Democrats or extra fascists Cool, extra fascists. But do not join the faction. Um, right, I suppose I would go with the infantry expert and army logistic expert here. And what's the world tension? 0%. And probably army offense or possibly army morale experts here. Probably offense though. So we're just sitting here and gaining army experience. Now, since we are gaining the army experience let's use it let's use it to modify our divisions for um, add recon companies and remove one infantry unit from them uh, this is to bring our combat width to 22 with our leader's skill of reducing combat width that goes down to 19.8 which means we can fit a better amount of divisions As you can see the available combat width is 120 this is always a multiple of uh, 20 so 20 is the optimal uh, combat width and now i can deploy these units if we want to although they are still missing some support equipment how is it my production by the way oh right yes we should start making some military factories i forgot about that should probably do that a bit earlier but um i suppose you can also wait for the great depression to be over you don't really need tons of equipment at this moment and get some more civilian factories as well. Because once we get rid of the Great Depression, we have so many that almost all of this will be, you know, under construction permanently. Okay, I could also build some on the islands that we own. Right, um, can we change the government, please? Uh, when the world uh, tension is high enough uh, we could switch to war economy although partial mobilization is also nice now this i could hold off but let's do this committee on technocracy this will give us three bonuses to electronics and support technology don't waste them use them properly i will show you in a moment how you should use them once this is done Oh, actually, once other stuff is done, because we still need to finish that focus. As you can see, Venezuela has no chance here, but we're constantly gaining army experience. And at this point, is going to be it is still going to be useful to us. Also, let's produce uh, let's produce some motorized equipment. Oh, also, we need more support equipment. All right, I'm going to switch it up a bit. This is going to be reduced in the priority. And let's set these to two. Okay, this should be okay. We need rubber though. We don't have rubber. But I still need these because I want to add field hospitals and logistics companies. Now, um, let's do 
these now. It's important you do this before you finish the focus that we're researching now, because I think they would eat up the bonuses and we need them for something else. If you already did the focus, don't do them yet. Okay, one. Uh, civil war. I would always advise against a civil war. Just wait a bit longer. Get a referendum or a coup. We're at 49%. It won't be long now, I hope. Although, you know, in extreme circumstances, you know, if you're unlucky, it can take much longer than that. Okay, how are we doing on the focus? We're doing okay. So, um, our economy is fine, although we still have the Great Depression. And this is why we need to start a war against a major country, because then we'll be able to get rid of it. Uh, okay, these are bullcrap, basically, and this is also not necessary for anything other than role-playing reasons. Um, so war propaganda is cool. But this requires war tension to be much higher. So we're going with a support Rock Island, which will give us some nice bonuses to artillery. Okay, uh, can I finish some research now? Yeah, let's, let's let these finish. Let's let these finish. There's no need to rush things too much. Okay, see? Referendum. Boom, we're fascist. That's, in real life, that's a bad thing, but for the purposes of the game, it's very, very useful. So, what are we going to do now? Well, we are going to justify a war goal. And basically, at this point, if you want to, you can just start conquering South America. But, uh, we want to remove the Great Depression modifier, which is horrible, bad and evil. See? Daily political power gain, consumer goods factories, 30%. Uh, 30% consumer goods factories is bad. It's problematic. But you might not want to start a war with a major country right at this moment. See, United States um, is very flexible. You can basically... Every scenario is open to you. So if you want to just fight and just, you know, stay in the, the Americas, um, don't start a war against a major country. Or you could just attack uh, the Allies, take out Canada. You could attack the Axis, join the Allies or whatever. Although now they won't accept you since you're fascist. Mm, so there's that, right? Or mm, you can attack the Soviets. Now, you can attack the Soviets from this side. It will be problematic and supply will be difficult. But, um, yeah, basically choose whichever you like. Attack the Allies, attack the Axis, or attack the Soviets. Maybe attacking the Axis is uh, the best option, because Japan will attack you anyway at some point. So maybe it's best to attack Japan right now. Depends on what you want to do. Okay, enough talk. Um, just for the purposes of, you know... Just for the purposes of what the hell, let's conquer Canada. Although I would probably, if I, if I was, um, you know, just playing it by myself for a full campaign, I would probably go either for Japan or the Soviet Union, because you can invade them very nicely from over here and just cut into them, take lots of land, although that takes a long time. Okay, let, let's do Canada. Let's do Canada. That'll take 250 days. Let's unpause and wait for that to happen. No, not deploying the units yet. Stockpiling uh, the equipment. Now, we do have a lot of political power that we can use. Now, mm, no interesting focuses are available at the moment. Uh, we could go to war economy if the world tension was high enough. It isn't. We can switch out from this armed nation, but we can also do that through focuses, so it's probably a little bit of a waste of points. We can get out of free trade, finally, but free trade is very powerful in terms of factory building and uh, research, so I would recommend that you stay with free trade at least for a few years to build up your research potential. But there is one other thing we need to do. We're going to fire the fascist demagogue and replace him. Wait a minute, let me, let me have a look here. Yeah, the other... Right. Uh, we're going to find the fascist demagogue and replace him with the democratic reformer. And you will probably ask me why I would do such a, such a thing. Um, it's temporary. Although, you know what, no, no, let's not do that yet. Let's not do that yet. I'll tell you why we need that and that will 
basically come in handy later, but for now let's just fire the fascist demagogue because we want to stay half and half with democracy because we'll be switching back to democracy for a moment and then switching back out of it. Why? Because to get the scientist ha haven modifier, which is very powerful, that's the sixth research slot, this is the fifth, um, you will need to be democratic for a while. So yeah, once we get these, um, right, once you get to these, you need to switch back to democratic for a bit to get this, and then you can switch back to whichever, uh, and this, and then you can switch back to whatever you want. But that can wait, just fire the demagogue now so that the support doesn't go too far. Right, I suppose I can use the points that we have to do, because there won't be an election, so uh, we won't get this for free. Let's do the industrial concern and let's do the infantry equipment. And probably some army guys as well. Ah, probably should have gotten the doctrine guy. Well, too late now. Alright, we don't need to stay at war that much anymore. Let's just keep it for a while. Okay, we can do war. Um, we can do war propaganda now, because the world tension has gone up so much. So let's do war propaganda. And the research slot is available now. Have a look here. This is the bonus that we researched. Don't do anything else. Just this, this, and this. Thanks to the bonus, don't the, those won't take much time, and they will give you huge bonuses to research speed. Now, if you have a look, this bonus also applies here, so if you were researching them with the bonus, you would basically waste it, because this is just so much better. Now, we'll do decryption and encryption, but only after we've done the last one. Okay, I suppose we do have a free research slot, don't we? No, no, I just used it. Anyway... Anyway, uh, once the support companies are done, I will add them to the unit templates, and then we can start deploying our units. How's our production? Mm, it's okay. Get a little, bit, a little bit more of that. And the Schluss of Austria. Yeah, I should probably focus more. Let's get rid of some of those civilian factories. Get more military ones. Just finish these up and continue building them, but get more military ones. Alright, Doctrine. We probably should have gotten the Doctrine guy because he would have sped it up a lot. But it's a bit late now, it's not necessarily a good uh, value proposition. Now, don't do these, don't waste the bonus. Um, the bonus is also... Um, there are two bonuses that cover them, but there's no way to know which one you'll use up. So don't do it until you start this research. Okay, now it is 38, so we can do this. Or we can go with this one, because it's better. Um, although it is ahead of time, so let's, let's not. And finally, some industrial stuff. No, no, ahead of time, ahead of time, ahead of time, don't do it ahead of time with a bonus but still ahead of time I'd recommend going with the Thompson because you can then start producing them and they will mm, strengthen you significantly okay war propaganda changed our manpower laws and mm, prepared intervention eh, it's useful for the extra political power but it's not very important because we have found a different way to deal with this now the giant wakes on the other hand lead to the extra research slot So we could go here. Um, also, these are nice. I suppose you have to make a choice. Uh, I would probably recommend going here, 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 and here to get the extra research slot. So let's do just that. Okay, where were we? Is it time to beat up Venezuela? No, not ready. Not um, yet. But let us monitor the situation also. All the other units, we can st we can put them on the Canadian border and start, you know, preparations. We could attack from Alaska as well, but there's no need. Just, yeah, I do like making plans this way. Then we'll add all the units to this army and replace uh, the leader. Okay, don't do these, you'll waste the bonus, just go down this way. It takes a long time, but it speeds up all your other research by 5%, and it is going to be so very much worth it. Also, since we have completed uh, the research on the attachments, let's add those. 
Now we are missing some equipment, unfortunately. But now we can set up a location for them to deploy. I suppose Washington is as good a place as any. Oh, I clicked Maryland, that's fine. Okay, prepared intervention is being done. And we need more motorized and more support equipment. I suppose I could give you more of that. We're missing rubber. I suppose I could buy rubber. Let's buy rubber. Maybe not from the British, because we'll be fighting them soon. In this uh, scenario. Ah, okay, let's buy it from them for now. National focus. Go with the giant wakes to get the extra research slot. And we're staying at war with Venezuela, so we can get these as well. Although soon it will no longer be necessary because the world tension is going up. Also monitor your war goal justification. Oh, it's actually it's time to finish off Venezuela. Because we'll need to start our war against the Allies soon. So, just execute the plan with super aggressiveness. Won't take too long. Now, the war goal is to puppet them. Also, if you change mm, to fascist beforehand, I think Chile is the target. I'm not sure. Um, anyway... What else? Yep, the war goal is to puppet, but you don't need to take that. Let's just take all states instead. Okay, that's it. Assign all those units to the army on the Canadian border. Hold them, they will transport themselves on their own. And here you go, Field Marshal. Now, unfortunately, this front line is separated. I'm going to assign these... Uh... Okay, let's assign everyone to this order and the units we're about to deploy will assign over here because we are about to deploy the units they're not ready yet but we do need them at the front lines so probably we should have deployed them a bit earlier those are all details though we'll be fine okay let's deploy all of them and train some more mm, how do you have full equipment Let's train tons of them. Ah, right, we have lots of equipment, just not the one we need. And that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so we have deployed, how many? 15 regiments. Let's add them to the army. I have them selected, you will notice, on the left, and I'm adding them to this side of the front line. They should arrive in time. I'll set the army to aggressive, let them plan for a bit, and then we'll attack and take over Canada. And then the Allies. We'll prepare some naval invasions once this, once this is done. All right, uh, is it time for some industrial research or artillery? Let's do artillery. Let's do better artillery. And add some guys. I suppose infantry expert. Then we'll add an army logistics guy and the, the army offense guy as well. Now, that's not a lot of units, but there aren't many troops in Canada. We'll be fine. And once we're out of the Great Depression... Okay, the justification is done. Let's go. Declare war. Now, now we're at war with the Allies, and it falls you, to you to manage fighting them. I probably should have left a unit down here. Yeah, those are details. I'm here to show you the general idea. Yes, lots of people are called in. Yeah, the safest... Oh, yay! Italy is sending us uh, reinforcements. We, you could even join Axis to keep yourself safe from, uh, from Japan. Or rather, to have their help with Japan, and when Japan is done, um, you know, betray them. That, that is a valid option. Anyway, how is uh, the training? Oh, right, I'm no longer purchasing... I am no longer purchasing rubber. Can I buy rubber from anyone? Dutch East Indies. Let's do that, yes. They'll join the Allies at some point, but still. All right, mm, we still have the bonuses. We could do uh, the artillery research. But I suppose... Don't do these um, yet. I suppose I'll go with some construction. Because now that our focus is done, oh, I should have done it a bit earlier, we are at war with one of the majors, which is a requirement for issuing war bonds, which will finally get rid of the Great Depression. And if you were at war with the Axis or uh, the Comintern, that would also be available. And you should also do that. 
Right, I probably should have stationed some troops over here to attack from the other side. This is all, you know... I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible. Okay, we have researched better artillery. Let's switch this up. Munich agreement and France has joined. Not a problem. Right now. In general, it can become a problem, but we should have Canada capitulate soon. And this strategy is pretty much valid for whoever you wish to attack. Whether it's... Uh, well, it would probably be the most difficult with the Axis, but um, just uh, do a naval invasion of Japan straight off. Or do a naval invasion of the Soviet Union. An attack from this side. Okay, Canada has capitulated. Although there is still a bit of territory that is under British control. Okay, that's one order. And there's another one. There's an, oh, there is no land connection here. No matter, you can do naval invasions, can't you? Maybe I'll do a naval invasion guide. And now assign half of these units to this plan over here. Okay, execute. It'll take a while for them to be transported, but it should be fine. Right. Not much else to say, really. Uh, okay, we should probably wait for the issuing of war bonds to be complete. Just to show it off, it is done. We have issued war bonds, and now we can go here. Um, now, once you've gone and done this, I would suggest... I would, um, yeah, this is nice. This is nice. You should probably do that one now. Or limited, no, limited intervention and then the extra research slot, yeah. But once these are done, you should switch back to democracy for a moment so that you can do rubber reserve and manifest destiny and open up the way to scientist haven. And then switch back to whatever you want. That is basically it. Okay, this is my opening strategy for the USA. And you can choose... you have a lot of choice here. This is very flexible. You can pretty much do whatever you want as long as you keep to a few simple rules, like attacking quickly and then changing your economy when you're doing that, and also hiring either a communist revolutionary or a fascist demagogue to get your ideology changed from democracy. Those are basically the only rules you need to follow for this to be successful. Okay, let's uh, very quickly discuss uh, how I would attack other nations if we weren't attacking the Allies. Also, now that we have attacked the Allies, uh, and when we're finished here, I would send some troops over here, do some small naval invasions, and work my way up to Europe. I might even attack Denmark on the way, just to have better, uh, you know, naval bases. But I think we can do this in one attack. Not sure, though. We might need to take Denmark first to mount an attack on the UK, and when the UK capitulates, well, things become much easier. And then you can land in France, maybe even join Axis once they start fighting the Allies, because as you can see, the Axis and the Allies are not fighting yet. And you will want to beat up the Axis eventually, you will want to conquer the world, but you can use their help against the Soviet Union, and if you have them, it is very likely that either you will avoid fighting Japan, when it's not convenient to you, or uh, Germany and Italy will help you fight Japan. So, yeah, joining the Axis seems like a great idea. You could even do that before attacking the Allies. Um, just not call them in. Or, or call them in, whatever you like. And as for focuses, uh, do these, got the extra research slot, do these, switch back to democracy for a moment after you've joined the Axis, or comment on if you want to and then switch back to whatever you want after you're done Manifest Destiny. Um, yeah, that's pretty... Oh, this focus will cancel if the requirements are not met. Okay, um, so do Scientist Haven and then switch back uh, to Not Democracy. Yeah, that's my opener for the US. Um, if you're going fascist. But if you're going fascist, you can attack fascists as well. It doesn't really matter. 
Now the three main attack plans would be, four main attack plans would be either, you know, do what we just did, or go to South America, come through Mexico and, you know, conquer all these, and just conquer these, it is possible that they would not be guaranteed. I'm not sure what the algor algorithm for guarantees in South America is right now, but it is possible that you'd get away at least with a few wars before you would have to fight the Allies. Uh, so this is War Plan 1, South America. War Plan 2, what we did, fighting the Allies. And then mounting some naval invasions, hoping to Denmark, attack well, attacking Denmark, hoping to Denmark, hoping to the UK... Um, if you can't, you know, land in the UK as is, you do have a strong fleet, so it should be enough at least to land your troops. And once you've landed your troops, you're you're done. Um, UK and France. That's plan two. Plan three would be attacking the Soviet Union. Uh, for that, it is best to station our armies here. Although you would need to build a better port, so they would get enough supplies, and get your fleets. Um, I think it was here, here, and here. Or here, here, and here. I don't remember. I did this in the test game. I was attacking U the US, not the Allies. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the USSR, not uh, the Allies. And I made a naval invasion landing here. If you're doing naval invasions, always remember to include a port. Or quickly build one. And, you know, build some ports once you've arrived, if it's a huge front line like this. And then you can advance through the Soviet Union through here. Though the terrain is difficult, it will be problematic to do it. And finally, the Axis battle plan, I would advise you just do a naval invasion of Japan. Prepare it, land, for example, here, you know, get your ships going and all that, declare war, land, take over Japan, and then proceed from there however you wish. These are my multiple openers from the US. As you can see, it is 1938, and we have already conquered Canada. I hope you liked this video, and I invite you to view my next one. Just look at the amount of factories we have. Oh, so beautiful. And no Great Depression anymore. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.